What did they do to you this year? Well, they grabbed me in the town square, nah. stripped me bollock naked, <sighs> tied me to a lamppost, spanked me stupid with a mackerel, shouting obscenities at me Jeez. while pouring hot wax oh. over me flesh before sticking a bicycle pump up me Jesus, ass. that's shocking. Uh, you're telling me. We agreed 15 pound. I gave them a 20 and the bastards ran off with a change. Nah. Bastards. Don't worry, Rog. Oh. Most students get their come up in. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget that story of the two girls in the bedsit in Rathmines up in Dublin in 1984. <laughs> Where all them Dublin punces live. Betty Bulbous and Mary O'Hare from Trim were in their first year in UCD. They rented a one bedroom bedsit, and for the pair of them, it was their first time away from home. <laughs> they were all excited. <laughs> And they had their whole lives in front of them. Mary was particularly happy as it gave her a chance to escape an intense relationship with a local lad called Gobda O'Hurlihy. He was incredibly possessive and jealous. I'm warning you, Mary O'Hurley. Leave me and you'll regret it. But Mary packed her bags regardless, and after a couple of weeks, the girls were settling into their student lifestyles. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> were they smoking that uh, hashish and staying up all hours listening to Christy Burke and Led Zeppelin tapes? <laughs> <laughs> they were having the crack all right, nope. but they kept an eye on their studies nonetheless. Yeah. The only thing that uh, left them a bit unsettled was the frequent break-ins on the road they lived on. Mary's father came down one weekend and fitted metal bars in the windows and left the family dog Rex with the girls for added security. <laughs> would that fellow Rex now, would he have as many diseases as our pox? Ah, no, not at all. <laughs> ah, pox, you're yeah. the bestest wicked fella yeah. with the most diseases in the wholest world. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that seemed to reassure what? the girls, and the dog slept by the girls' bedside every night. Oh, by the bed. Jesus. <laughs> Imagine being that dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Being privy to two young ladies stripping off every night. No, no, uh, I mean being able to lick your own butt. Are you a dirty what? beggar? A couple of weeks had passed and the girls had been sleeping well. They got into a routine of every night locking up and with their very own guard dog felt safe and secure. One Friday night the girls had planned to go out clubbing with their student pals. But uh, Mary wasn't feeling well and decided to have an early night instead. Uh, Betty said, I won't even turn on the lights when I get back. Ah, that's good word. And with that, Betty left and Mary locked the door behind her. Come here. Did they go to uh, Leeson Street? Yeah. Uh, to one of them flesh farm discos where just a glance could mean a bedroom encounter. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, and they danced till four o'clock in the morning. It was pitch dark when Betty got back home, but she remembered not to turn on the lights, as it would disturb Mary. She felt her way across the bedroom, oh, almost okay. tripping over the dog. Oh, a good boy, she said, as he gave her a reassuring lick on the cheek. It was noon when Betty woke up to the sound of drip, drip. Huh? Her head was throbbing with a hangover, but that was nothing compared to the outrageous horror that confronted her as she threw back the curtains to wake up her best friend. <gasps> because Mary O'Harry would never be waking up again. <sighs> she had been stabbed a thousand times. Blood had seeped through the mattress and was dripping on the floor, and the dog was hanging by its tail from the ceiling light with its throat cut out. But that dog, uh, it, it licked your one's face when she got into bed. Betty soon realised that it wasn't the dog at all. There was a message in blood scrawled on the mirror. It read, I told Mary she'd regret leaving me. Lucky you didn't turn on the lights, Betty, or you'd be dead too. Jesus. Good dog, Hurley. Mary's our jealous boyfriend. Yeah. And 
He gave Betty the lift. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. But how did he get in? Nobody knows. And he was never seen again. Jesus. Come here. You won Betty. She was very lucky to survive, wasn't she? Oh, was she? Huh? She ran in terror to the window to shout for help. She slipped on the congealed blood, uh. fell out and impaled herself on the bars that her friend's father had erected for their protection. <laughs> <laughs> She's neck ass, congealed blood. That's me. <laughs> oh, just second students. Good night. Good oh, night to you now. Okay. Settle down there. Oh, uh, will you, oh, will you say, <clears throat> um, Rog. What? What's that sticking into me back? Oh, where? Uh, that should be the uh, bicycle pump. Oh, oh God. Oh, yeah. <laughs>